Hi everybody, this is Miss Corrado, and today we're going to be reading from a book series on epic books about American robins. We've already read the book um, about dolphins, so today I wanted to read the robin book, and this is a part of a series that has lots of different kinds of animals. They have a rabbit's book in their series, they have one on sea urchins and lobsters. They also have other types of books as well, so if you like this, informational text, you can go on to getepic.com and you can sign up for a free account for 90 days. So I recommend that you do that and then you can go ahead and find some of these great um, informational books that I'm about to share. So today we're going to be reading about American Robins and American Robins are a type of bird. So let me just get back to the beginning of the book. I was looking through it before and this book is really fun because it's all about Robins. Now, this book also starts, like a lot of informational texts, with a table of contents. And a table of contents can tell you what's inside. So um, this is like when we were looking in class at the contents list. It's really nice to be able to do that. So when I read this, I know what's coming next. So in the very first part, we're going to find out what are American Robins. Then we'll find about how they find food. Well, can I figure out what this word flocks is? What are flocks? Nests and babies. Aw, we're going to read about baby birds. And then the glossary, which is the place to go if you have some unfamiliar words and you want to know what they mean. To learn more, they give you information and then an index tells you where you can find specific parts of the book. So let's go ahead and take a peek inside. What are American robins? American robins are a type of thrush. They are the most common thrushes in North America. So I'm wondering what a thrush is, because that's a bolded word. So if I put my finger right over that word thrush, I wonder if I could figure out what could go in that spot, right? Let me put my finger right over that word and I'll think, hmm, American robins are a type of hmm. They are the most common hmm in North America. Well, the picture might help me with that. Maybe I can use the word bird instead of thrush and see if that sounds right. Let me try it. American robins are a type of bird. Oh, that makes sense. So a thrush is a bird. Hmm, okay. And then I'm looking over here and it says here that the birds live in trees and bushes, in yards, parks, and fields. They are also found in woodlands, mountains, and tundras. And then this map right here has a heading and the heading tells me more about what I'll see next. And that's what is helpful about looking at different charts. So in this case, this chart is a map. The heading tells me what I'm looking at and the chart tells me the information. The chart can organize the information by also using pictures. So let me look at it. Hmm. So I see a map that means that wherever there's blue, that's where you can find the American Robin. Looks like the American Robin is all over North America. It's a pretty far range that they can fly. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to skip over any of the charts or maps that I see. I'm going to look at them and treat them like they're part of the text because they are, even though they're separate, okay? A chart can give us more information because today in our lesson, I'm going to teach you that charts can tell us more information about the topic to help us understand it better. A chart organizes this information and helps us understand it by using pictures, words, and also um, different kinds of color. Maybe it even helps us organize the information um, by giving us some information that wasn't in the text. Okay, so let's take a look at the next page. Oh, this is a chart. Size of an American Robin. So I know that that is not in the text, but it's something extra. It's something I can look at these pictures and maybe this little chart with the numbers on it to see what else I can learn about robins or about any topic if there's a chart inside of a book? Well, I'm looking at the robin, which is really this small little thing. And then this white figure is an average human. So I can tell just by looking at this picture that a robin is way smaller than a human. Okay. And then this text can help support what's in the picture. So let me read a little bit. American robins are the largest thrushes in North America. They measure about 10 inches or 25 centimeters long. Well, 10 inches, that's not even a whole ruler. So that's a small bird, okay? And especially when looking at the picture of the human, I can tell from the chart 
that a robin is small. Okay. All right. Their wingspan, oh, that's a bolded word right there, is about 14 inches or 36 centimeters wide. So their wings are actually longer than themselves. It's a pretty fun fact. Oh, I see another chart up here. Let me read the text first and then I'll look at the chart after. The birds have a plump orange bellies and yellow beaks. Their backs and tails are gray or brown. Males, that means that's the boy, are often darker than females. However, they can be hard to tell apart. So here's another chart. I'm going to look at two things in a chart when I look at a chart. I'm going to look at the title of the chart. That title tells me what I'm about to see. And I'm going to look at what's inside. What's inside, you're going to see bolded words, and you're going to see pictures to help you understand more about the text that isn't either in the text or it's extra information or it helps us understand what's there better okay so right now it says identify an american robin when i identify one i want to look at it and know that it's a robin how do i know it's a robin well it'll have gray or brown feathers well that picture helps me really see the color it'll have this orange belly i can really tell that that's what the belly should look like from looking at this picture. And it has a yellow beak. Wow, that's a great close-up of the beak right there. All right, and all of those parts make up a robin, okay? So I can use the chart to learn what, an, what a robin looks like and how I can identify or find it if I were looking at birds outside. It's pretty cool. Let's see what else is there. American robins are known for their cheer, cheerful bird song. They often begin to sing before sunrise. They continue to sing throughout the day. Finding food. American robins search for food during the daytime. They run or hop across the ground. They stop and stand still. This is how they spot prey. Hmm, I think prey is something that they catch for food. Let's see if I can um, read a ne the next page and if there's a chart that will help me with that. Oh, yeah, on the menu. Now, it doesn't say what they eat, but I know that a menu is something I look at in a restaurant. So then whatever is on the menu should probably be what they eat in the wild, even though they're not going to go out to a diner or something. Okay, so here is my chart. Okay, I see earthworms, choke cherries, juniper berries, dogwood berries, American grasshoppers, and beetle grubs. I can see a lot of berries on this chart. So it must be one of the main foods of a robin. I see that word berries and here and here. And I also see cherries, which look like berries. So they definitely are eating different kinds of fruit. And then I also see different kinds of prey that they catch. So they catch worms, beetle grubs, and American grasshoppers. So it looks like they might eat smaller insects or little animals and they also eat fruits from the trees like these berries and cherries. Okay, so I'm getting information from this chart. And what I get from it is that a bird, like a robin, can eat both, both plants and animals. That was, must help me with this word, omnivores. The robins are omnivores. Omnivore. Now, an omnivore is someone that eats both plants and animals, and this chart helps me understand that. I see plants up here, and I see animals down here. All right. In winter, they eat a lot of berries. In summer, they like to eat earthworms. They also feed on insects, spiders, and snails. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, that definitely helps me understand omnivores. They eat both berries, which are plants, and animals. Oh, here's another chart. I'm going to come to that in a minute. Flocks. American robins form flocks during winter. Some flocks migrate to warmer areas. Flocks may gather in trees to eat, whoops, to eat and roost. The birds warn one another when predators are near. Oh, predators. This must mean animals to avoid. Okay, so these are animals that are dangerous. 
These are animals that are predators. They're ones that might hurt or eat a robin. So a predator might hurt or eat a robin too. And that's why they say these are animals to avoid. Let's see what they are. So a robin should avoid other kinds of birds like blue jays or crows or even hawks. They should also avoid black rat snakes, red squirrels. I didn't know a squirrel might catch a robin or a house cat. That I knew. I knew a cat might want to catch a bird, right? So this chart can organize for me the predators or animals to avoid if I'm a robin. And I can see that there are many kinds of animals. And I can even see a small picture to match each one of the animals that would actually hurt a robin or be a predator. Okay. So let's just check predator. in with that word again. An animal that obtains food mostly by killing and eating other animals. Yeah, so these animals would actually hurt a robin. Interesting. That chart taught me a lot about what kinds of animals might hurt a robin. Nests and babies. Females lay eggs two or three times a year. They build nests out of grasses, twigs, and mud. The females sit in the nest to keep their eggs warm until they hatch. Oh, here's another chart about babies. It's called baby facts. Names for babies are chicks. Number of eggs laid, three to five eggs. Time spent inside the egg is 12 to 14 days. Wow, I thought it was longer. Time spent with parents, about two weeks. That surprises me. So after two weeks, they might ask the bird to leave. Hmm. Parents feed chicks insects and earthworms. After about two weeks, the chicks leave the nest. Fledglings stay under bushes until they are ready to fly. Oh, okay. So maybe I can think of what word might go in the spot of fledglings. Maybe we're talking about the babies. Let's see if that sounds right. Babies stay under bushes until they are ready to fly. That sounds about right. Yeah. So I don't want you to forget all the strategies we learned when we were in school, right? Sometimes we have to take those bolded words and say to ourselves, well, what word could go in that spot? What clues around us can we use, like the pictures and the charts, right? And from the charts, I learned a lot of facts about babies. I learned that they stayed in the egg for only 12 to 14 days. That's about two weeks. I learned that after another two weeks, they get set free by their parents, right? So there's lots to learn from a chart. You never want to ignore it and skip it, okay? And then that's how our book is about to be um, over. Our book ends with a glossary, which if, if you need something, you can go back to it and say, what do these words mean? Okay, and there's also some resources to learn more about that topic. And if you ever wanted to go back to find something specific about robins, you could look it up. So for example, if I wanted to learn about how the um, robins find food, I could go to page 12, 14, 15, or 20. If I wanted to learn about their tails, I could go to page 8, right? So these are really fun features that we'll talk about a different day. And boys and girls, that is the end of our story. All right. So thank you for reading it with me. There is a slideshow linked in your assignments that will um, help us to understand how to write a little bit about these charts that we've seen. And on different live meets, if you attend the live meets today, you'll be able to see how to do that too with Ms. Selecchia and myself. So thank you very much and have a great day.